Good morning from Narana Lutheran Church out here on the windswept prairies, 100 miles from Regina, the capital of the city of Saskatchewan. Welcome to those from nearby and those from far away. We are glad to have you joining with us at this, our pre-recorded worship service for the 4th of October. It's uh, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, and we have a few announcements. Some things are starting up again. On Tuesday, October 6th, Al-Anon will be meeting in Strasbourg at, uh, at St. John at 8 p.m. Worship and Music Committee is meeting on October 7th, meeting at 5 o'clock p.m. On Sunday, October the 11th, there will be a live worship service at Narana at 11.30 a.m., October the 4th, we will be meeting at St. John Lutheran. So uh, things are starting up again. Uh, we also have a council meeting at St. John, 6.30 p.m., October the 14th. And uh, Narana Council will be meeting at 7.30 at St. John Lutheran in, in Strasbourg. And... Uh, so we're going to be doing a, a reverse uh, of what you might have written on your calendar for services. So Sunday, October the 18th, there'll be a worship at St. John at 9.30. October the 25th, also, there's going to be a baptism with the family here at Narana. I think we've got it all covered. But uh, check the... Uh, Check the uh, announcements page at uh, stjohnmarana.com if you have questions about announcements. All of the news is updated there at the website. Okay, so we're back to doing announcements. Things are slowly starting to come back to something that we would recognize as being the old normal. We are going to be using our worship service from the Red LBW, words, words will appear on the screen for anything that you need. Um, we begin, as we begin everything in our lives, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we start with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess, confess that we have, we have turned, turned from you and given and ourselves, ourselves into the power of sin. We, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. repent. In your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, sins known and, and unknown, unknown. Things, things, we things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, number 580. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Continue on 100, page 138 of our LBW. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast a victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the 
people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory. For our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We turn to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you came all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we hear our lessons. Hello, my name is Samantha Clay. I grew up around here, and I go to church here. And I'm going to be doing the readings for today. The first lesson is Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. He be my beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds so that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Here ends the reading. This is the psalm for today. Psalm 80, verses 7 to 15. Please read along with me. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt, and cast out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. Here ends the psalm. The epistle lesson for today is Philippians chapter 3, verses 4b to 14. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. 
Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith, faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear the gospel lesson, we turn to the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Gospel lesson for this 18th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at the 33rd verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect the produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now I'm sure as you've heard these lessons, you've heard the direct connection. The, Jesus is quoting Isaiah. He's quoting Isaiah's parable. Now, it might be helpful to just back up a little bit and remind ourselves where we are in the season and where we are in the lessons. Jesus is still answering the question from two weeks back. He's been asked by the Pharisees and the chief priests, the leaders of his people, the leaders of his church body, if you will. He's been asked, by what authority are you doing these things? 
And if you go back just a little farther, you get what he's being questioned about. We have the cleansing of the temple. So Jesus is acting here in the tradition of Isaiah and the prophets. And there have always, through God's people's history, been these two streams. There is the prophetic and the priestly. I happen to be in a rather awkward position because I am acting in the priestly tradition. Later on today, we're going to be going up to the altar and we're going to be doing the reenactment and the re-embodiment of Christ in the meal, in the Last Supper. That is our priestly action. That is what, where we gather around the altar, like the people of God have always gathered around an altar. And instead of doing a fresh blood sacrifice of an animal, we remember the sacrifice of Christ's own life for God's people. So I'm acting in the priestly role. And yet the lessons, oh, the lessons. These lessons are clearly the prophetic tradition. Isaiah challenges the people saying, you should be producing the fruit of God's will. And yet here you are, God's beautiful, beautifully planted vineyard and beautifully tended vineyard, and you're producing nothing but wild sour grapes setting God's teeth on edge. And Isaiah warns God's people that if they do not return to the call of God to justice, love, and mercy, that they will be uprooted, the fence will be torn down, and everything will be turned back to its wild state. It's a challenge. The prophets have always challenged God's people. And in fact, the prophets usually end up challenging the priests. It's the priestly tradition that tends to drift into protecting the status quo, protecting the way things are. Because it's stability that the priest provides. It's a uh, the expected rituals that bring people into the tradition and that give comfort in frightening times. But it's human nature that it is all too easy for that to slip into complacency and to an, a hesitancy to question the way things are. Yes, we're holding things up and keeping it the way they are, but maybe the time has come once more, as it has so many times, and in fact, always needs to be done somewhat, to some extent, to challenge the way things are. When we look at nature, things never stay the way they are. Because the way they are embodies change. The seasons don't stay static. We don't get an extra year of summer because we want it. We don't get a longer winter because we're tired and we don't have the energy yet for spring to come and all the planting to begin. The seasons roll on and on and keep changing and keep transforming and morphing and plants arise flourish, flower, blossom, produce their fruit, and begin to die. Change is the only real constant. Change is the only real stability. And the prophets keep reminding us. God loves us just the way we are, but way too much to leave us that way. So Isaiah challenges the people of God in a time when they become complacent, they become comfortable with the way things are. And 
Isaiah challenges them, don't keep producing wild grapes. If you need to, uproot the vineyard and replant and produce what God wants. Justice, mercy, peace, and love. Because you slipped into corruption. You slid into complacency and into allowing people to be abused and used instead of loved and cared for. So we have the classic confrontation in this large arc of the story where Jesus has come into the temple, found that they have slipped into dishonoring God's temple by turning it into just another Walmart. And the people who have come to worship are being fleeced by unscrupulous people. Those who sell pigeons to the poorest are particularly sleazy in overcharging more than this pigeon is worth and taking advantage of those who can't afford a lamb. And Jesus says, you can't do this. You have to stop turning God's house into a marketplace where you practice unjust and unfair. And unscrupulous ways. So the conflict is set. And the priests say, this is the way we do things. You can't be bringing in the wrong kind of currency into God's offering. So you have to change the coins. And so if somebody skim a little bit off of the top, hey, that's the cost of business. But Jesus says that's not good enough. We need to practice justice and mercy and care for the least of these. Constantly, Jesus calls us to look to those who are being abused and mistreated and taken advantage of. And the prophetic call rings loud and clear from Christ. But the priests have their role, so they question the prophet. Say, Why, by what authority? And Jesus has been answering with these parables and showing that his authority is the authority of the prophetic, the call to return. So Jesus finishes this string of parables that we've gotten to now. At this point, he goes to somewhere that he's going to disarm their defenses. He tries to get under the skin of the defenses, the, the, the ready defenses of these priests by appealing to something familiar. He goes straight to Isaiah, one of the favorite scrolls. Isaiah is one of the longest prophetic books of the Bible. And it's, it's a, a, a sweeping epic. Two books, first Isaiah and second Isaiah, as we, the scholars divide it up. And he goes to this story that Isaiah tells. Listen to a parable, Jesus says. He tells him, it tells him, it's rare for him to say, I'm going to tell you a parable. But here he says, listen to a parable. And he starts quoting the Isaiah parable. A landowner planted a vineyard, and by this, okay, the landowner, oh, a parable about the vineyard. I recognize this one. And they're maybe a little uneasy because they do know how this one goes. But Jesus not only quotes Isaiah, he ups the ante. He takes it to the next level. Uh, planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, built a watchtower. Yeah. Then he leased it out to tenants. Ooh, we've departed from Isaiah at that point. And went into another country. And then he tells the story of what is happening at the time. The servants have been sent. The prophets are the servants that the landowner sends, asking for the produce, the grapes, the, the sweet grapes and the wine that should be produced from it. But instead of giving God the glory of producing the kind of fruit of love, justice, peace, and a kingdom of sharing and fairness, 
They killed the prophets. Yes, that's what had been done. The prophets were executed, so many of them, because they challenged the way things were done. And finally, the landowner sends his son. And Jesus is realistic. He says, the landowner says, surely they'll respect my son. But you know what happens. The son is cast out of Jerusalem, put up on a cross, and executed. We don't want this challenge. We don't want this questioning. We just want things to stay comfortable for us, the way they have been. <coughs> but God's call comes nonetheless. And then he quotes Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. The call that they have no use for turns out to be the center of the faith. See, Jesus in all of this is acting as a Jewish apocalyptic prophet, calling for repentance, calling for a change of heart and a return to the justice and the goodness and the kind of kingdom that God would rule. Where the weak are cared for, where the powerful are called to use their power for those who have no defense, where justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, to quote another prophet. As Isaiah called, Jesus calls too, for us to lay aside our comfortable privileges, to be ready to shake things up and call for change. We are called to stand like Jesus, not with those in power, not those at the peak, but with the crowd. Jesus is standing with the crowd, and the crowd recognize his prophetic role. And the priests, those in authority, are afraid of the crowd because they recognize that Jesus is a prophet. The world keeps changing. The world keeps transforming. The crowd keeps calling for justice to be done. And the power structures resist. They always do, because they are the power structures. Things are the way they are because that's the way they've always been. But the people call for change. The prophets stand with the crowd who are harassed and beaten down and frightened and oppressed. And the prophets call for change. Let us listen. For Christ would have us stand with the harassed and hurting, scared crowd and call for repentance. And when leaders are wise, they listen. And when that happens, God transforms the world and he keeps changing. Amen. Let us turn to the hymn of the day. Oh.
Together, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give you thanks, O Lord God, for the continuing renewal of your church, that you continue to send prophets to challenge us to call us to greater justice, to greater mercy, and to greater care for one another. May we always be willing to listen, to hear, and to heed your call, that your church may be renewed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the stability you provide through governments and those who serve in those roles. May they be empowered and strengthened in their flexibility, that they be able to see where your call comes for greater justice, for greater peace, for greater care for one another. May all people be empowered to love and strengthened in their caring 
that our mutual service may benefit all people to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask for the needs of all of those in our community and around us. At this time of the year, we especially ask for safety, for caution, and for protection for those who are working in the fields, bringing off the harvest. May their long hours also include sufficient rest, that they be careful and kept safe as they labor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up before you all those who work in caring professions, not just those who provide the food, but those who distribute it, and those who provide for our medical needs and other needs. Thank you that you have called so many to these caring professions in nursing homes, hospitals, in daycares, in schools, in all the places where we care for one another in our communities. May all of these workers be kept safe. May they also be encouraged in their work to know that they are doing your work in caring for your people. And may they all be fairly compensated that all people may rejoice and be thankful in their work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up before you all those around and among us who are struggling at this time. For those who are ill, for those who are grieving, for those who are in need in any way. May we be your hands and your feet ministering to those who are at need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up before you those in our last Mountain Pioneer home, all the staff and all of the residents, especially those connected to our congregation, Edna Gessner, Doreen Hansen, Doris Hansen, Christine Schultz, Pauline Yauk. And we rejoice with Pauline in her 99th birthday. We pray for Margio in Regina and Bethel Manor and for all of those who are in care we name before you those others whom you place on our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear as we meet surrounded by the headstones of those who've gone before us. We are mindful that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. May we be inspired by their faithful walk, to walk to the end of our days, that we too may be seen as good ancestors when we have gone to our rest. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend for all. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. At this time, we, have, we would have the traditional passing of the peace. Wish peace to one another. And uh, in COVID time, we do that in a way that is safe and properly socially distanced. But we also would like to give an opportunity for those who wish to participate with us in offerings. We are uh, not doing that in this service, obviously, but uh, there are opportunities to give on the website should you choose and, and should you be able to do so. Those who will participate by contributing, uh, we greatly appreciate your participation with us and your partnership with us 
in producing these services and in serving one another. We have an offertory hymn that we like to use at this time with this service coming from number 692 in our Lutheran Book of Worship. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and soul with all the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. To whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done done on earth earth as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day day our daily bread bread. and forgive us our trespasses trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. us. And lead us not into into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, and the the power, power and the glory, glory, forever and and ever. Amen. Amen. Come, for all is now made ready. The body of Christ, broken for you. the body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his holy and precious blood, strengthen you all and keep us all in his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love and care toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. We turn together to our closing hymn.
Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.